Hey guys, uh, welcome back to modded Minecraft early game. Uh, so last time we covered basic power production just to get you started. Uh, this time, I think just with the natural progression of things, we're going to cover basic energy storage. Uh, you want that energy to be able to use uh, when you need it or when you want it. And so we're just going to cover some basics here. These are the very basic machines. Um, just the very basic energy storage. Uh, starting with the leadstone energy cell, it holds 400,000 RF per tick. Or just 400,000 RF. Uh, it has an in-out of 200 RF per tick. And it, it is configurable. You can tell it, you know, which side you want in, out. You want it to do nothing. That's what the yellow color is. Nothing attaches. Uh, you can do redstone control. And it's got this little interface. You can shift and tell it to... I think that... Well, I think it actually says, yeah. If you hold it over, decrease RF output by 1,000. That's holding shift. If you hold control, it decreases out RF output by 5. And then I think it's control shift will do 10,000. So... You hold one of those buttons or the combination of the two and you can change the input output. Uh, obviously this one only goes up to 200. Uh, the recipe is as such. Uh, you need three copper, one redstone conductance coil, which is electrum, and two redstone electrum you can get just by putting a gold ingot and a silver ingot in a tinker smeltery. Uh, so there's no other, you know, furnaces or anything required and that will get you an electrum ingot. The next one is the hardened energy cell, and it holds 2 million with an in-out max of 800. Uh, again, redstone control, you've got the configuration here, and the recipe is as follows. Three copper, another redstone conductance coil. You need uh, the leadstone energy frame that you saw there with four invar. Invar, as we covered in the last episode, is uh, two iron and one ferrous or one nickel. Uh, and again, you can do that in the Tinker Smeltery, no other machine required. Uh, this one does require another machine uh, to produce it. This is the energy, the basic energy cube from Mechanism. It holds two megajoules, uh, and it does an in-out of 800 joules per tick. Um, I don't generally use Mechanism, so I'm not... Con I'm not... I, I don't know the configure or like the the RF to joules, joules to RF, all that stuff. Uh, the recipe is here. Uh, you're going to need a steel casing, two iron, four redstone, two energy tablets. Uh, the steel casing is four steel, one osmium. Osmium is an ore you can find in the world. Steel you can get from quantum flux. What happened there? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Uh, quantum flux, it's four coal, one iron, gets you steel. This is where you need the extra machine uh, to make the enriched alloy, which is redstone and iron in a metallurg metallurgic infuser. And that will get you that. I'm not going to show the recipe for the metallurgic infuser. Uh, you can look it up in NEI. Uh, but that's three gold, two of the enriched alloy, and four redstone will get you the energy tablet. You need two of those, and that gets you that. Very nice. And next up is the Quibit Cluster Level 1. Uh, there are several several le levels to this. Uh, this one holds 500,000 RF per... Uh, 500,000 RF, has an in-out of 100 RF per tick, and the recipe is here. Uh, so you need three steel ingots, uh, which we just saw. You need an iron casing, which we saw last episode. Uh, one lapis, three iron will get you four. Uh, and then you're going to need three of these Quibit Clusters, or Quibit Crystals, <laughs> uh, which is one diamond, two nether quartz, and two redstone. Uh, this is kind of, like, you know, you can get this in chests. Uh, you know, there's other ways of getting nether quartz. You don't actually have to go to the nether. Uh, well, I mean, if you want a lot of it, you do. But, you know, and that will get you four Quibit Crystals. And there you go. Very nice. Uh, next up is the basic capacitor bank from Ender.io. Uh, it holds 1 million, <laughs> sorry, I was like I was counting the zeros, 1 million RF per tick, and it has an in-out of 1,000. Uh, just add another zero there, and then, yeah. Uh, and you can adjust it as you saw, you know, you, you want it to put out 100 RF, and then the sides are adjustable, or configurable, uh, and then so you do that, and then you use left-click to spin it around, and you can tell it, you, you right-click to go input, 
output disabled, which means nothing will connect to it, or, you know, input output, all that stuff. Uh, the recipe is here. Uh, so we have four basic capacitors, a, red, a block of redstone, <laughs> and four iron ingots. Uh, the basic capacitor, dang it, uh, is one copper, four gold nuggets, and two redstone. And so you're going to need four of those. And that will get you a basic capacitor bank. Another one, again, that people don't generally think about as early game energy storage is the reactor. No matter how big your reactor is, it will always store 10 million RF per tick. Or, <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying per tick. It will store 10 million RF. So that one, just this, this is what we showed at the, in the previous episode, uh, basic energy production. Uh, so this holds 10 million RF. Um, this one is much bigger and still holds 10 million RF. So if you went with this one for your basic energy production, uh, this also will double as your basic energy storage. One of the great things about the, bas the basic capacitor bank or all the capacitor banks is the ability to stack them, to put them together and hold more energy and have more input and output. And so you can see I stuck four together. The, the storage went up to 4 million and at 4,000 RF in and out. Uh, the basics, same basic thing can be done with these. Like you can stack these and then this one you can tell it to put out, you know, output down and make sure this one has like input up. And then energy from this one will flow down into this one. Uh, same thing with this one. The same, same idea. Uh, this one can basically do the same thing. You can do that. And then this guy will fill up. Um, this is the output side here, I believe. I, again, I don't really mess with mechanism a whole lot. Uh, this one, unfortunately, does not share energy with blocks around it. Uh, you need, like, and, well, it doesn't share energy with another one of itself. Like, you could do that and then it'll transfer the energy between them. Um, and then this one, obviously, if he's trying to attach another block, it'll mess up the multi-block. But this one already holds 10 million, so it's good enough as it is. All right, so hopefully you guys found this helpful. Hopefully this makes the first few days of modded Minecraft just that much easier. And I will, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you all next time.